Now, the spread of COVID-19 has already caused severe unprecedented impact on the global economy. The projected global recession resulting from the coronavirus outbreak will certainly have a knock-on effect on African economies and further reduce food security in the region. Now, the level of economic effects cannot be compared with the West African Ebola outbreak in 2014. However, there are some lessons that can be drawn from such severe pandemics. African Risk Capacity ARC is planning to launch the ARC Outbreaks and Epidemics Parametric Product in 2020 as part of the AU's overall response to outbreaks and epidemics. Lead Advisor Outbreak and Epidemic at African Risk Capacity, Robert Kwame de Graft Ejako, joins me via Skype from his base in South Africa for a conversation on how the ARC can advise African economies to rise up after coronavirus is gone. Good evening, sir. Welcome to Business Live. Uh, thank you. And then thank you to your viewers. Um, it is a pleasure to uh, share our experience with you. Now, as a lead advisor of outbreaks and epidemics of the Africa Risk Capacity, could you tell us, in your view, how the coronavirus pandemic is affecting or has affected economies of Africa? Um, I was listening to the segment earlier uh, to this and, and the numbers. I think currently um, we, we are looking uh, over a million confirmed cases um, and uh, about um, 45 thereabouts, uh, thousand deaths. And I think Ghana has gone uh, over 200 uh, confirmed cases and, and some deaths. Um, when you look at the projections that have been made by the World Bank, by the, uh, by the IMF, by the Economic Commission of, uh, of Africa, our own ministries of finances, uh, there is clearly um, going to be um, impact negatively on the economies of, of countries. Uh, I think there's a projection of about three to eight percentage points, a GDP cut, uh, which McKinsey uh, recently put out to um, estimate around uh, 90 billion um, uh, for a best case scenario and uh, upwards to 200 billion um, for a worst case scenario for 2020. The economic impact you can look at from three angles. I think first you look at the country, uh, the country level. The restrictions on population movement clearly uh, means that uh, people can move around. So individuals and livelihoods, uh, small, medium scale, large scale businesses are, are going to uh, suffer. Um, farmers and, and, and fisher folk. You can then also then look at the the country level. And here, the closure of of, of, of borders means that the inter-country trade, the intra-country, uh, 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 and as well as the African uh, continental trade that we were hoping to boost uh, will, will suffer. And this aggregates to negatively affect the economy. I think I had the Minister of Finance tabling uh, concerns in Parliament around this for, for a stimulus package for Ghana. Then you go to the global. And at the global level here, you were looking at falling commodity prices, especially oil in Ghana being an oil oil a producing country, as well as the other extractives. So clearly, uh, from the individual household livelihood, uh, livelihood level to the continental uh, scale and then the global impact that uh, we are all going to face. Thank you. All right. No, so, so based on these dynamics, how would you recommend that our governments respond to the pandemic? <laughs> Um, I think um, th there are two things that we need to do. Well, there are a lot of things, yes, but you can uh, uh, bucket them into two uh, broad areas. One, there's a public health response, um, and then the second is the economic uh, recovery uh, uh, package or response. And th they must be uh, done, I would say, in tandem simultaneously. The public health response, basically here we are looking, um, the objective is to save lives and ensure good health for the population at large. So here are some of the things that needs to be done must gear to stop the spread of the virus um, and then use the opportunity to build lasting systems that can uh, be activated for future uh, outbreaks and epidemics. I mean, I will speak about setting up uh, a national and regional response teams, um, which will then look at the different pillars of the public health response, including um, treatment, uh, case management, isolation, uh, provision of, 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 of health uh, services, and just making sure that we uh, cut the curve or flatten the curve as the terminology is now. On the economic side as well, I think um, we must ensure that there is um, 
um, food uh, security and basic services are provided to the most vulnerable and, and the rest of the economy and um, maybe focus more on economic recovery. And I spoke earlier of small businesses, livelihoods, uh, provision of loans and a stimulus package. I think African ministers of finance uh, have tabled a call for about 100 billion of the stimulus package to the continent, of which about 44 billion will be uh, to def uh, def uh, um, debt, uh, um, uh, to defray debt. So these are all things that needs to be done um, from yeah. uh, the public health and the economic level to make sure that we weather the storm. Now, ARC offers insurance to countries for disasters. Now, tell us how the ARC insurance products can help countries in times like this, and how can countries sign up to this? Right. So the African uh, Risk Capacity, as you said earlier, is, an, uh, is a specialized agency of the African Union uh, was set up in 2012 uh, to provide disaster risk finance and management. Um, we have a drought product that has paid out about 60 million uh, to support a number of our countries, and we underwrite um, in insurance in the area of about 600 million. We have since 20. Uh, 16, been producing an outbreaks and epidemics product with the support of Africa CDC, um, WHO, and other partners funded by the Rockefeller Foundation and the Swiss Development Corporation. The product seeks to provide countries with early intervention financing. So um, we work with countries to model uh, and understand the risk that they face um, cost these risk, and then an insurance is provided to uh, underwrite this. And uh, the main objective is that as soon as you have a, a disaster, um, this will come in to help you. It was going to look at, uh, it will be launched for cover starting 2021. It was covering Ebola, uh, meningitis, Lassa fever, uh, and Babak. But given what is happening now, we are modeling to include coronaviruses. And the main aim here is to provide protective cover to countries very early and in an outbreak so that um, a country would not have to rely on external uh, donor support and re uh, reactionary, but more uh, a proactive uh, response. How, how do countries get to sign up? Oh, um, oh so we were going to um, uh, present this to ministers of finance at a meeting that was planned in Accra, not, uh, I think, uh, late uh, last month, but it got called off or postponed because of um, the, the uh, COVID-19. So countries can write to the African uh, countries just have to show their interest uh, in, in this, and uh, we will start the work with them in assessing their risks and, um, and, and, and working around this. I mean, info, um, just uh, reaching out to the African risk capacity, um, and then we will put our numbers down so that they will be able to contact us. We, it is a sovereign insurance, so here we work with governments, and, and, and the uh, ministries of health and ministries of finance will be the main entry points uh, to, to engage here. So the, the African Union, as we said, will be uh, are behind us in making sure that the continent is provided uh, this uh, security uh, for health um, emergencies. Many thanks for your time. Robert de Graaf Kwame Jack, who is the lead advisor, outbreak and epidemic at the African Risk Capacity. He joined us via Skype from his base in Johannesburg, South Africa.